Tonight, see what truly exists inside the world of the paranormal. Inside. Inside. Join the discussion and review some of the best paranormal evidence captures from a wide variety of experienced and -and up-and-coming investigators. See and hear what they capture, where they captured it, and how they captured it. Right Right now, now. on Entity Voices. Paranormal Evidence. Evidence. Live. Good evening and welcome to Entity Voices Paranormal Evidence. I'm Tony Rathman. I am Cherie Rathman. I am Chris Allgood. I am not. I am Audrey Keeler. <laughs> <laughs> I am Lourdes Gonzalez. And I am responsible for people going off cue on their introductions <laughs> yes, to being a fool because I was the original idiot. Thank you very much. I'm on the <laughs> <laughs> so Yes. 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 Happy, Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Nobody's it's in It's always bed. nice when that falls on a Monday. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. But we are so excited about tonight's show. Yeah. We have the one, the and only, I mean. the godfather <laughs> of paranormal himself, John Zaffis, on tonight. <laughs> we are... Yeah. <laughs> we are all absolutely thrilled about it, as I'm sure our audience is as well. So without wasting any time, let's bring him in to say hello. Hello. Hello, John. Hey. 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 There's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody? Good? Good. Very good. 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 Doing good. Doing good. Good. It is a it is an absolute pleasure to to have you on the show, um, and we're going to do something a little different tonight, which is going to be just as thrilling for us as the Entity Voices team as hopefully it is for the audience. But we are actually going to take some since we're all paranormal investigators and spread out throughout the country now, um, we're going to take some of our clips to let you see, review, give your thoughts, opinions. Um, And that's going to be hopefully just as fascinating for the audience as it will be for us to hear what you're, what you think, what you, what you see, what you hear and, and uh, what kind of opinion you have on them. So I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Yeah. This is a huge honor for us. I've, I've had the opportunity to be in the field and, and if you've never experienced this in anywhere in the Northeast or anywhere, Imagine being on an investigation and everybody's accounted for and you start walking around doing stuff and all of a sudden somebody goes, wait, who, who's, who's here? John, John Zappas just showed up. Holy <laughs> Don't pop in. And it was amazing. And then all of a sudden it's just like everything is like everybody's energy picked up and we were excited. And for people who know him from TV but don't know him, some people are apprehensive to meet someone they know from TV because they're afraid maybe they don't live up to the, to the hype. They're maybe not the likable person they seem like they are. Um, that could not be further from the truth with this guy. He is, he is a, a gentleman. He is completely yep. respectful and polite, down to earth, and a wealth of knowledge. And if you aspire to be in this field long enough, that should be your benchmark. Agree. Yep. Well Agreed. said. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I think most of the people that follow us because they're into the paranormal probably know this but i'm going to give you a chance john before we get into clips and reviewing stuff let us know let the audience know 
how the paranormal evolved for you. What what started your interest in it? How did it evolve? How did it bring you to where you are today and being involved in, you know, the different TV shows and, you know, being revered as one of the most respected paranormal people on the planet? How'd that all occur? Jeez, well, thank you. You just made me feel good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what actually happened was when I was 16 years old, grew up in the 70s, you know, I was a flower child, and that's all I'm telling you. But anyhow, <laughs> it, it was a Wednesday night, and I was just getting ready to go to sleep. I had school the next day, and I was looking down, you know, at the foot of the bed, and there was a transparent figure at the foot of my bed, and it was shaking its head back and forth. So I went downstairs, and I was telling, you know, ran downstairs at that point, and I was telling my mom about it, and she goes, Johnny, did it say or do anything? I go just shook its head back and forth. She goes, that was my father. And because uh, my grandfather passed away when I was four, I remember a few things, but that's it. So at that point, I, I said to her, I said, well, just, shook, you know, and, um, you know, she said, you, you're not going to remember this, but he was a very stern man. And he said very little, but he always would shake his head back and forth. Now, my grandmother had lived with us and she passed away a few days afterwards. That's what got me on the move of how hearing so many times people saying, you know, deceased loved ones are there or, you know, uh, a relative or a friend or something. And that really started getting me in tune with it. Now, at that point, I, my mom, you know, I was telling her and everything like that. And when I was with uh, visiting my uncle at that point, Ed Warren, now Ed and Lorraine Warren are my aunt and uncle. Now, Ed Warren and my mother were twins, but they were night and day. You would say ghost to my mother, she'd start crying. You say ghost to Ed, and he goes, where? So, <laughs> yeah, they were, so anyways, I was sitting there telling Ed the whole story, and he's looking at me, and he goes, you mean to tell me you never believed in this? I went, no, I thought you were just doing it to make a quick buck. You know, so, <laughs> again, that opened it up, and that's, you know, just what kept me going and digging into it. And believe it or not, this year marks my 50 year anniversary of being involved with the paranormal. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. That Congratulations. So this, this November will uh, mark that when I had my very first experience. And that's what opened it up with me getting involved. Now you can remember all years ago, you didn't talk about the paranormal. You you didn't say you investigated, let alone getting involved with the demonology end or, or any right. part right. of that. Right. So I was very lucky. I call myself a paranormal brat. <laughs> and the reason I do that is now Ed and Lorraine only live 20 minutes north of us at any given point where any of us were living. And my mom would always cook family dishes and she said, take them up to my brother. And I would do this and dropping off the food, they'd be getting ready to go somewhere. I would jump in the car with them and I would sometimes I never even knew half of the places we ended up. But that's, <laughs> that's what started the whole thing. And it just kept evolving from there, evolving. I would start getting more interested, start going to, you know, a lot of haunted locations, uh, you know, just visiting them and everything. And it just, you know, just from there, it just kept building up and building up. But the one thing that I was very fortunate with, with that is the fact of being exposed to so much back back then that most people would have never seen. I, you know, I got to see uh, Buddhist exorcism, Catholic, shamans, medicine wow. men, wow. rabbis. I got to see all those things before anybody was even talking about it. But that's what led me into the demonology. So one day I just sat down and I, you know, actually I walked in, I was dropping off food and I said to Lorraine, I go, where's my uncle? She goes, he's downstairs there. Why? And she would always do that. I go, well, I want to learn about demonology. And she's standing at the kitchen sink going, oh, dear. Oh, dear. And she starts screaming for my uncle. Anyways, brings me downstairs. We sat down. We talked through the whole thing. And, you know, he explained to me, you know, getting involved with it, the whole nine yards, your life will change. And da, da, da. And I looked at him. And he goes, well, what do you think, kid? And I go, I'm not worried about it. He leaned forward. He looked right at me. He goes, I am. He goes, you're not, he says, you're going to learn. You're going to learn the hard way, just like I did, aren't you? And I go, well, <laughs> yeah. I guess. 
<laughs> boy, oh boy, did I learn. And here I am, you know, uh, 50 years later. But now, before we jump, because so many people are always intrigued about this because I've been on so many other people's paranormal shows. You know, I've been on Ghost Hunters, been on, you know, right. uh, um, Zach Show and so many of the other ones. Everybody, you know, it, I look and we know each other differently because it was before the TV shows that right. all of us had established these friendships. Jason and Grant and I, I, I go back with them before they even had children, you know, kids even were around or anything. Right. Wow. Right. So, Again, all these guys, when we do get together or we run into each other or anything, it's not, you know, we don't talk about haunting. We're talking about the kids. We're talking about houses, talking sure. about projects. And people walk up and go, well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I go, nothing about paranormal. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, and um, that's what led me into um, getting to the point where I was and decided that, you know, a few years back, 10 years back, that uh, I wanted to see how it was doing uh, an actual TV show and did that for three years. So that's awesome. That's awesome. That's John, awesome. If, awesome. If, if you had the opportunity to go back and interview you in the first two years you were doing this and interview yourself back then, do you think you back then would have ever thought it would be where it is now? No. The whole field? I, I didn't even think I'd be where I am today as far as um, being involved with this because most people don't even know this too. You know, 30 years of my life, I was a mechan involved with mechanical engineering mm -hmm. and the far I was involved with the pharmaceutical uh, business. Now, you know, the, um, uh, oh gosh, lathoscopics that they use today for surgery and everything. Yeah. I was involved with developing that. Oh, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, back in the day. Oh, so anyhow, um, and, and dissolvable staples, you know, those are the things I remember I walked away with from working in, in, in the uh, pharmaceutical uh, field. Wow. So again, um, that's what, no, did, 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 no, I never thought in, in a million years watching and seeing where everything is today that this would have ever happened. I would have never believed it. Never. But that, that shows your passion for it. And, you know, somebody who can stick through it for the long haul shows that they have a deep rooted passion for the subject, because let's face it, 50 years, that's uh, that's incredible. And yeah. you realize that it's Valentine's Day and that marks 12 years for us, I even know. though we've been saying 12 for the last three months. I but know. as of today, we started 12 years ago. Right. right. But you, know, the, cool. you have to have that passion now in. When, when I say that is the fact that, you know, even 50 years have gone by with being involved with this, I'm still intrigued. I'm still interested in a lot of things because there, there's one thing you'll never, that I, I'm uncomfortable with, what other people do, kumbaya, whatever, I don't care. But, you know, um, saying I'm an expert, never, because right. there, there, there is no there is none. There's none. That's why you know, when somebody says to me, you know, when I deal with a paranormal group or something, they're going, John, we didn't get scientific proof. What scientific proof? Right. I said, do you understand we're collecting data and we're building this resource. Someday we can hopefully be able to prove it out scientifically because we have to have repeatability. We don't have that. You tell right. Casper to do something twice, he's going to run out of the room. We know that. <laughs> but anyhow, exactly. so that, that's what still keeps me going with a lot of this and watching people developing equipment and some of the different things that, you know, and intermingling on how open people are today. The, yeah. the, the, it's yeah, such an cool. open, open topic. And the running joke, you know, with me, is the fact that when, when my two daughters were growing up, I couldn't tell anybody I was involved with or afraid their friends wouldn't let, you know, their parents wouldn't <laughs> let them believe it. My son comes along and I'm the coolest dad in the neighborhood. <laughs> so, you know, go figure, right? You know, it's just weird how everything has evolved, you know, uh, within our field. And today we have a lot more engineers and scientists and, you know, people that, um, um, are just so intertwined with this. So Absolutely. to me, that that's a great thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and just say this. And sure. it, again, I don't, you know, uh, knock the shows or anything because I know all of them on the show. So I'm not, you know, they're friends, but Skinwalker Ranch. I love watching that when they have oh, all the equipment. Gosh, yes. 
Yes. And, yeah. you know, they're trying to prove and disprove different things. To me, that's cool. Yeah, because they're explain, yeah, they're explaining it and it holds my interest mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm just watching how they're doing it, what they're doing it and what, you know, again, uh, it, it is what it is, but um, it's intriguing. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I love, and, sorry, Ron, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I love the fact that he brought up the, the, the provability aspect of it and methodologies being scientific or not, because we've talked about this before. Any method to be considered scientific has to be falsifiable for one. And for mm -hmm. two, for two right. the onus of provability, people in the field of paranormal research, when they're going up against the cynics, well, and I always call them cynics because they're not skeptics. Skeptics look for the truth. Right? If, you're, if you think everything is BS in the paranormal, you're a believer. It's just a different paradigm. But when we go up against those people, I like that. When we go up, it is. It's a belief system. If you everything's BS in the paranormal, or everything is paranormal, those are belief systems. The skeptic looks for absolution. So you can, you're a believer if you don't believe in any of this stuff. It's just a different paradigm than the one who thinks everything's paranormal. But we we operate from this position of the provability of the paranormal is on, the onus is on us who do the research. But this is not little league baseball where if you don't score enough points, the other side wins. We have to prove something's paranormal, and somebody who thinks it isn't has to prove that it's not or it remains anomalous. Right. That's how it works, yeah. right? The onus is on the person mm -hmm. staking the claim. If your claim it's paranormal, you have to prove it. If your claim is not paranormal, there's only three claims you can have. It's paranormal, it's not, and I don't know. Mm. Yeah, right. that, that's a good point. The, yeah, the, yeah. the other point, though, is that everyone always looks for science to justify it or, or a, be able to say, yeah, that's true. Anything that we deal with in the paranormal falls so outside of the world that that science revolves in <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis that the variables don't even fit the equation for science to go, yeah, that 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 works. So that's the other complication is that, you know, like mm -hmm. we always talked about before, you, you're not going to be able to bring a spirit into a lab, test it three times, three times over, and show proof of that. But like Ron always says, <laughs> You know, astronomers don't bring a planet half a million miles away into a lab either, but we know it exists. So yeah. those are the other problems with getting science to justify something is because the variables don't fit what we're investigating. Right. They can't continue to discredit the field because it's a field research. Anthropology is field research. Sociology is field research. I, astronomy, those are all field researchers. They don't get discredited like paranormal does just because it's not in a lab somewhere. And Marcello Bacci in Grosseta, Italy, he did get tested beyond the norm with spirit communication and all that stuff. So um, it has been proven to jump hurdles like that. Just that, like, like John so eloquently put it before, the whole kumbaya thing is not happening because people have biases and they have staked positions and then they're not going to budge on those because it's, it's a core belief for a lot of people. So they hold their ground. But mm -hmm. if you look at the data, which is what he said perfectly. That's what we're, that's what we're aggregating. It's data. Then, right. then you have to look at it openly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But it's important. Yeah, I think it's extremely important um, w with that as far as the data collection goes. You know, everybody keeps collecting all that data and we keep building that base you know, where someday, someday, I hope before I'm a ghost, that there are programs that are developed that can do that repeatability, that can, you know, we can, to me, that would be the one, again, I would be standing there kumbaya like you couldn't believe. Because then I would just be like, okay, there you go. You, you, you have it now. You have what we've been searching and looking for you know, for uh, a, a tremendous amount of years. But like Ron was saying, and, you know, he's probably heard me even say that. I always turn and I say to people, we go from a spiritual perspective, believe it or not. That's what it is at this point, because that's the only thing we have to back what we do or how we look at things. Yeah. So therefore, again, that that's how I handle it in the way I deal with it. And, you know, Keeping, I, I always keep that open mind with stuff. You know, I am very old world. Anybody that works with me on things will tell you that. They don't even like me touching equipment because I screwed things up so bad. <laughs> you know, it, it's terrible. It's brutal. So because then I'll start poking around, look, uh, what is this? What is it doing? I'll hear, don't touch that. And I go, yeah, I say that all the time. But anyhow, it, it's just that. 
I believe so strongly in that on the things that occur and the things that happen. Now, they, there's a theory that a lot of people apply uh, to our field is where uh, they feel the veil has thinned over the years and, you know, that these connections are happening. Do I think that there's something to that? Absolutely. Because there, there's a lot of people that have some phenomenal, you know, spirit communications. And, you know, there are people that are extremely gifted individuals, you know, uh, that do things and say things and react to things that I stand there and go, cool, you know, cool, <laughs> because it's still part of my old world. And again, it's not something that could ever be swept underneath because right. it's a part of our field. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yep. so true. Well, we're we're hoping to be able to show you some of those things tonight. <laughs> oh, cool. But one question for my team: Do you want me to play them in groups like Chris and Audra's first? Then or random. I, you want me to? Yeah, you can go random. Or random. Shoot yeah. them up. We're right. getting the show. Right. <laughs> well, hold on. Okay. Hey, just don't play your one clip first, Tony, because then the rest of ours suck. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll 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 push that one to the back. Um, all right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give you back control, Sheree. I promise. I just because they're in like these are all Christmas. <laughs> all control wrong. already. So for play. all of our viewers, if anybody has been paying really close attention to our show over the last year, we've been with KGRA. <laughs> Tony has control issues. <laughs> I gave her, I gave that her control. Is true. <laughs> I, 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 I videos, I, I'm like, I didn't even hear what they were talking about. Thank you, Chris. So she goes, well, I'll do it. I said, it's yours. The Can job is yours. Yeah. Go for it. Tony, Play a clip. Tony's good at it. So. There we go. Why do you keep coming in here? That's a good one. That's a good one. Let me know if you want me to play it again. One more time. Yes, yes. Why do you keep coming in here? Okay, I heard the stop and caught. Those, yeah. those were the two words that I was able to pick up immediately before you know uh, anything with it. That as soon as I heard that and I'm listening to that, that was a type of situation in the way I was looking at it was that this was something that was trying to be very sinister and whatever it was or whomever energy was intermingling with it felt like they caught them. If that makes any sense to you, that's what I got out of that. See, I, I do this when you, when somebody plays me EVPs, or I look at video or anything, I start just going in it and going, okay, what, where, when, how, what is it trying to say? What is it trying to convey? Because wouldn't it be so cool if Spirit could just say, my name is John, I'm here to talk to you. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yes. But then that would put us all out of business, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. So let me tell everybody watching what's phenomenal about John is – that was caught in the rental that we had when we first moved here to Charlotte. And, you know, me being insensitive and Audra's sensitive too, she just doesn't admit it. But we kept having experiences. We, we felt like the area that we were in, there was, there was people traveling through. And the first couple of weeks we were in the rental, Audra actually saw a male spirit in the bedroom, thought it was me. And it wasn't. I was in the other end of the house. And we were constantly mm -hmm. hearing voices and I kept telling Audra, I was on the phone with her one day. I was at home. She was on her way home from work. And I said, I, I keep hearing that damn voice again. She said, stop and do an EVP session. And that's what I caught in that EVP session. It's the same mail that we'd seen and we'd heard quite a few times. Yeah. Yep. Very awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, it's a good EVP. Yep. Yeah, it's a good catch too. And, and, and John, not even knowing the background behind it, pretty much nailed it. Nailed he it. did. Yeah. Yeah. He did. yeah. <laughs> All right, should we go to the next clip? Yeah. Uh, not in order, you're going to mix them up. So oh, go, no. go here. Okay, here we go. Next clip. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> so I uh, just just to give you a little background on, on what that was you saw obviously okay, wait a minute moving. before you do wait, uh -huh. wait that was a little girl that got tied up into a nightmare type of situation I want to almost say that the child um, it might not even have been a child it might have been someone that was about a teenager uh, perspective but got taken advantage of and she had to keep it to herself because she didn't want to discriminate not discriminate um expose the family or, or bring anything to the forefront and wow. she's been reaching out and she's been trying to explain it and there's certain people that come in that environment where she attaches to very quickly that, oh, that's incredible. On. That is incredible. Wow. Yeah. That's what so, April mentioned. Yeah. So right. That's crazy. So uh, what I was going to explain was not the story part, but that is that is phenomenal that you just said what you said. The method that was used there was direct radio voice. This is um, the old European method. Martella Bacci did it. Friedrich Jurgensen um, before sweeping ghost boxes. Before there was a Frank's box. It's just an empty, barren, white noise frequency. And then I okay. filtered it a little bit. So it's just literally a white noise, empty channel in the long wave band. That's it. So it's not a ghost box, but it's not an EVP. Um, April, April was with us. She was the psychic medium that was with us that night. You actually know her, Johnny. Yeah. Intuitive April from New Jersey. Okay. All and right. So we were running a direct radio thing and we heard it. And then the other uh, gentleman who's with me, he's watching tonight, Giuseppe. He was like, he heard her name and then we played it back and it says, Brink April, go to the basement. And she was, a April was with us. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And she, she's a psychic and she pretty much said the same thing you just said. When we were, right. Wow. Uh, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why they called you the godfather. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You don't, want to, you don't want to piss John off. You might find a horse's head in your bed next to you one morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, John. And the way, you know the worst part about that, Chris, is I'd feel bad for the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and here's the next clip. You better leave this house. You are not welcome in here. Wow. wow that was good it was okay clear. wherever that was that spirit got brought into wherever that location is that is not a spirit of the property or of the building it was actually i'm going to say it was during a communication and somebody had brought that spirit in to that spot i don't know if that connects anything <laughs> with anything it sure does. Oh, all right. Okay. That <laughs> actually right. gets unbelievable. Uh, Chris, man, you're good. Chris, that was um, Francisco's house. Oh, so to add what John just dug up, this right. was a private investigation of a friend of mine, his house. Matter of fact, that he still That's have an injury. Room. Yeah, and there, there was, uh, we actually brought Joe in. Joe's a demonologist. Tony and Sheree and I did the investigation there. Audra had the good sense that she would didn't want to go, and it's a good thing that she didn't because we found multiple spirits. We actually found a doorway, and there was an angry gentleman that was actually pulling other spirits in. There you in go. Investigation. Yeah, that, that's incredible, John. That's incredible. Yeah. I know. Take a, a, a couple second clip and uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. Johnny, Johnny's done this once or twice in the last fifty years. He's done this once or twice. <laughs> He may have a little bit of point. Okay. Yeah, you know, just, just to you know, even even bring more humor into it. When we were filming the show and we were out, you know, you have everything set up and everything has to be the yeah. Okay. And I would go, no, the spirit's in the other room. It's not in this room. 
And we would go back and forth. I would get production so pissed off at me. <laughs> and it would be, yeah, they, they'd have everything all set up again. I'm going, no, the activity's in the other room. Well, it got to the point where, you know, I, I would just stand there and I would just laugh because they would say, go ahead, you're going to blow everything out of the water. So just tell everybody where to set up, tell them what to do, what to film, how it's going to go. And I would just go, well, you know, I said, that's the way it goes. I said, not everything, you know, lines up that way. Okay. And believe it or not, there, there were uh, three or four different episodes that when the kids were all in there and doing the EVPs and everything like that, they caught phenomenal stuff. I would even have some of the people from uh, the actual network say, how did he know that? How does he even know anything about some of these different they and the producer used to go, I have no effing idea how this guy does this. <laughs> He's dialed in. He's dialed in. You know, we, we talk about developing connection with spirit, right? And the whole concept of, of energy and everything being morphogenic fields, we're all part of the same living energy everywhere. Yeah. So I mean you can't you can't be in this with the passion you've been doing it for 50 years and not have a stellar connection, you know, and you're, you're so and grounded and good intentions and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not surprised by that, but I am as everybody should be thoroughly impressed by it. Wow. Yeah. yeah wow. Immensely impressed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's play another one. Let's play another I know, one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing I have to say before we go to the next clip. KBRA, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that we had John on this show tonight. Okay. okay, so yep. this one? Yep. Quick one. That's a quick That's, one. Yeah. Yeah. Let me play that, that again. again. Okay, that, that came from a big area, a big open type and there were several connections that got made when this was all transpiring. And I don't think that that was actually a human spirit that was making the connection. I think it was some type of a different energy that tied in. Because immediately as I was listening and watching, there was swirling that started to take place in multiple we're transpiring in multiple. It makes yeah. perfect sense. And there's actually a lot of information there that actually I haven't shared with everybody else yet. So this is a, a plantation home that Audra and I discovered here in North Carolina. And we hooked up with the Historical Society of Montgomery County. And they allow us to do investigations there. And they allow us to let other teams in to investigate and we control it. And all the money for the investigations goes straight to the Historical Society. We don't keep a penny of it. This house mm -hmm. has been sitting in the same spot since 1830. And we originally thought there was only like three or four spirits there, you know, a boy, you know, the, the original owner of the house, his wife. And there was this male that we caught. This was the first investigation that we did. But we brought in Piedmont Paranormal back in December and they did. It was their first public group investigation where we brought another team in and they actually caught a screech. And we were getting a lot of. Uh, activity in the forest surrounding the yeah, house. The woods around yeah, it. Okay. And and so mm -hmm. this actually ties in to the screech because when they when he sent me the clip of the screech, it, it almost it sounded like an elementally demonic kind of mm -hmm. screech. I mean you can't determine that without going there and doing more more you know research yeah, and investigating. Been back yet, so but when we when we going? When we going? <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, when you just for the viewers, when Chris says a screech, he does not mean that. No, I don't mean that. No, not that screech. Right. Not that screech. <laughs> the clip that I sent us, we were all setting up the control center because it started raining outside, and this is the original house. So we wouldn't allow them to set up equip uh, their control center in the house, but we ended up have to because it was raining. And while we were all setting up their control center, they caught the screech. And th what John's saying actually ties in to new evidence that we just discovered a week ago. So that, wow. that is phenomenal. John, you are just kicking my ass tonight. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> ready ready for the next? How do we do that? It's like I... a second, second clip. <laughs> <laughs> How do you 
I do that? <laughs> I, it's, okay, it's got something to do with, I think, old age. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it was just, it, it. it's just something that started happening as I, you know, was involved with investigating and as time would go and people would say or do something, you know, it would be, I would like, okay, wh what is it that's there? What What is else is there that it's trying to convey that it can't convey? So I don't know if that makes any sense to you or not, but that's what ends up happening when I get into that mode when I'm, okay, here's another thing too. I hear things that other people don't hear. Right. And it, you know, it used to drive me crazy because I'd be like, well, how come I can hear it, but nobody else can hear it? Different sound levels and different things. So yeah. it, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm one of those weirdo people, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hear, play the next clip over here. You don't want to talk? How are you? Did you say I miss you, baby? Come back. <laughs> that was clear. Okay, did I? And again. I want to say this was an abusive situation. This guy, the, the male was extremely, extremely dominant over her. She couldn't get, she could not break free. I guess maybe she can't break free in the spirit realm, but it was a very dominating type scenario there. And actually there's, I want to say several female that this, that this guy dominated over. And this one particular uh, young lady that is reaching out has tried to reach out several times. But the, the energy that is tying in with this whole thing. Okay, what else is coming to mind, too? It's almost like a um, bordella. Is that the word for the old whore? How, how do they say old whore? Okay, yeah. Uh, I, 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 it, it, it's almost like something like that is with it with this young girl and she, very 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 fragile she's fragile but he's very very dominant I, I don't know if that ties in with any of it or not yeah it, it fits the scenario in the landscape and you'll actually find this ironic that's true that yeah. that clip i captured um, that's a direct radio voice. Again, that was just an empty white noise. It was a shortwave frequency with no broadcast, no sweeping like a ghost box, just the white noise. And I had it filtered through a software to strip away any vocals should they show up. Um, that was in December when we saw you in our room at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. And she was getting ready and heard the male voice, which was a little bit lower, say, I miss you, baby, baby, come back. She walked over to the radio and said, did you say, I miss you, baby, come back? And then that's when you heard the male voice go, exactly. Yeah. And then she went, hoo hoo, and ran into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, Ron, are you trying to tell us there's whorehouses in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can actually, you can actually Chris, get a Chris, Chris, you beat me to that one. I was just going to say, that's a perfect setting for that. You can actually get a pizza and a hooker in one phone call. It's Domino's. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You're welcome. But that no, is no, spot on no. because the but, area in the yeah, last game, Las Vegas, that's very, very, yep. very possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's very possible. Yeah. All right. Ready for the next? <laughs> Here we go. Can you walk up and down the hall for us? I love that one. Yeah, that's like a good that. one. Well, <laughs> play, play, that, play that one again. One more time. Can you walk up and down the hall for us? The funniest part about that 
was that we had no idea that the camera wasn't wasn't working. working. Yeah. We were on it was a private home investment. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. No, um the okay. The individual appears and looks that they are in costume. And the, the person All right. It's almost like they're 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 performing and yet that person still doesn't even know but has okay has two other individuals that were there there was something that happened there was something that transpired within that scenario that was quick and fast it was okay i can only tell you it was like the person just dropped dead <laughs> he, Seriously? You just, just nailed it. it. So we got <laughs> called, we got called to a private home investigation here in Phoenix. Chris and Audra were still living here at the time, so they came with us. We set up all our equipment because they were complaining of footsteps, shadow figure up in the upstairs hallway, and it was scaring their daughter. So we set up um digital recorders, um ultraviolet or um yeah, ultraviolet cameras, laser grids, motion detectors. We had everything covered, but we only had one camera recording it all. And so we're walking away. And that was Audra that said, um, you know, we're. Can you walk up? Yeah. Can, can you walk up and down the hall for us? And that's when the voice said, your camera is not working. Well, we get the stuff home. I'm waiting to see for all the hours that it ran, if the grids got broken, if anything moved, if we caught anything, and there's no video. But yet we <laughs> went to the digital recorder and here's this voice. Well, the funny part is, is when we played it for the homeowners, they recognized it as an uncle. Yeah, their uncle. Yeah. Who, who passed away. Who dropped um, dead of a heart attack and he was always playing jokes on the family. Yep. So you nailed that one too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I'll take Johnny Zappas for 400. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom square and Bottom left. square. <laughs> so for everybody with squares. So yeah. for everybody watching, EVPE is going to leave the room and John gets the stage. <laughs> he already has it. He already has it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wow. This is huge, though. This is huge for us because we wanted to we wanted to share stuff with with John. The opportunity to share evidence with somebody with that much experience, that much knowledge, who's been doing this for so long, is is a, is an honor, and that's part of what we should do anyway. We should always be bouncing stuff off of our peers and getting opinions yeah. from people we respect. So we were looking forward to this just on that alone. But yes. but your your intuition is is it speaks to the level of experience of fifty years as much as anything could. To be that okay. and the other thing too, you know, because then people turn around and go, Well, you're psychic. No, I'm not. If you walked up to me and said to me, Do a reading on me, I bust out laughing. <laughs> you know, I, it, you know, it's just again, I, I don't look at it for you know, as the perspective of anything like that, but again, with, with that, when it comes into as I call it the work. Somehow I, I, I tune right into all of it because, again, I have had other people say the same thing to me. They go, well, how? I go, I don't know. I say some <laughs> freaking weird thing in me. I don't know what that is. But, again, it's what I, it seems to happen. And I don't know if it's something filtering through from the spirit realm that, that does that when I tune in listening to EVP or listening to – ghost box session, any of that stuff, it just seems to do that. And I, you know, and, you know, I, the, the only thing I can tell you is this is probably the first time I've ever done it on a show. I've never, you know, usually yeah. I'm just, yeah, Thank I'm you usually. Thank awesome. You saw it right here on EVP. <laughs> right? First time seen on TV. <laughs> yeah. I you know, think again, it's, it's I think just. It has something to do with you connecting on a consciousness level too. I think that, you know, part of where you're not, it's not a concerted effort kind of thing to connect. Maybe let's say like a reading. I think you're just, you're connected to the energies and to the, and to the work, as you said, what you do. I think on some level of consciousness, you have, you have a foothold in the material world. And I think you have a foothold over there. 
Scary. Right. Okay. What do you say, Ron? I got one foot on the banana peel and the other one in the grave. What do you say, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> no, but banana peel. Banana peel. It's two banana peels. Everything's even. Everything's even. Let me see if I can save you on that one, Ron. For everybody, for those of you that have not been in the paranormal field for very long, and you're saying I'm having trouble connecting with spirits, I don't get as much activity as some of you do. Between Ron and Lourdes and Tony and Cherie and myself and Audra, we've got 50 years of experience. John has 50 years of experience. To get those connections, it's it, it's it's like the profession that you choose, the career that you follow, the education that you choose. You got to put in the work to make the connection, to get that experience and to get that information to be as cool as fucking Johnny Zaffis. <laughs> yes, I dropped the F-bomb. That's a, that's an excellent point, but let's face it, paranormal wouldn't exist without some form of external consciousness. So I have to believe over that many years that his consciousness has somehow opened, adapted, and been able to pull back information when he sees clips like that because every human being has, has consciousness inside of them. It's just embodied still. Yep. And at some point, it's going to be released. That is everything that we investigate in the paranormal is unbodied consciousness. And so that, to me, that makes perfect sense. That's spot on. That's spot on, Tony. And the irony of all this stuff, too, is that all science is, is based on information passing through <clears throat> consciousness. Right. But science doesn't have a clue what consciousness is. They, right. Exactly. Correct. Nor, nor can the mind figure out. It can figure out anything, but it can't figure out how itself works. Right. Same thing with consciousness, because it's it's you, and you, we're trying to debunk what happens to it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they, All right. You just did something, and this is something that that you know I go I go batshit crazy over this. All right. <laughs> when we go, you go into a location. You're going in to investigate. You know, it, it's a, a critical, important element to stay at 101 basics when you're investigating. You know, you need, you need to find out all the you know uh, stuff that's going on. And, and okay, once you know that, you got your history. You know these different things. Naturally, if you have an environment that has some type of supernatural activity that's transpiring, it's going to happen. Right. It will happen. It is just, it's just a of our field. So a lot of times, okay, you'll laugh at this. I, a lot of times when I'm with my paranormal group, they're setting up the cameras, they're doing this, the horns, bells, whistles, everything is coming out. And I'll sit there and go, well, Jesus Christ, two hours later, we just lost the freaking ghost. <laughs> so, again, it, it's like the bottom, you know, it, it's, I always tell everybody, don't be pushing away the basics. The right. basics is our fundamental foundation of what we do. Capturing the EVPs, the videos, and all the other things is fantastic. That helps to back what goes on and what is happening with everything else. Yes, that's an important element. But again, so many people now have just... The, the basics have just gone away, and if they feel they don't capture an EVP, they're, they're not getting a ghost picture or getting video or something, It nothing's happening, and that, that's the farthest thing from the truth. Agreed. The farthest thing from it. That's Agreed. very good as well. Yep. Johnny, you say that you're not psychic, but with all the years that you've been doing it, you must have developed some type of psychic ability, a characteristic of it. So you may not be able to read people, but you can figure out maybe the meaning or what's conveying off of just a simple little EVP or, you know, video or anything like that. Cause that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're processing. There the has data. to be some kind of psychic ability that you developed over the years, even if you can't read people. I, I, I do definitely believe, well, I do believe everybody can pick up on stuff. That's everybody. True. That's true. Yeah. Everybody. But you're yeah. impressive, dude. <laughs> okay you know again with 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 that uh, um i don't know how you know again yes i i got to agree with you you know with that that you know 
you do become, you know, I call it being in, in that zone where, yeah, you, you can pick up on things and understand things. Okay. Now, here, I'm going to throw this out because I know you're going to bust out laughing. When the three of us were standing there talking, you and I locked and we started picking up on each other. Because as we were trying to process thought and trying to convey, you pick, you, you instantly. And I turned and looked right at you and I go, she picked right up on what I'm trying to convey here. <laughs> and it was, it was dynamite because it, it, was, it was at that point. So, yeah, do you... Yeah, is there a possibility with some of that, with that connection as far as being in tune with the different types of things? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I have to say yes, you know, to, you yeah. know, part of that. But like I said, if somebody ever said to me, oh, you know, can you sit down and do a reading or, you know, read my palm or something? I just, I, I, I bust out laughing. I just start laughing. <laughs> and I would probably, you know me, you, know, you, you two know me well enough where I would say, I say well, what do you want to hear? Whatever you want to hear, I'll tell you. I don't care. What you want to hear. <laughs> Ask him to, to whisper like an EVP. And then you're probably going to read him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Next yeah. clip. Here we go. That's a okay, that spirit is not there. That spirit had come with somebody that was there. And that was definitely a male spirit. And it's actually been around. <laughs> wow. It's amazing because, uh, so that's that 1830s plantation home again. <laughs> Okay. All right. So you're just lining this all up, Chris. So we're all going there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the key. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a little boy that is about five to seven years old. His his name is Joseph, and he is he frequents the house with his father, who is Jeremiah, and they so were. We, we, know so Joseph, sure. we know Joseph for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we picked up Joseph and Jeremiah that night. Audra actually saw Joseph and um, we took it to the historical society and they brought back an 1870 census and Joseph at the age of seven, no five at the age of five, I still have the picture of the record was recorded as being one of the servants children in the house. So the male house servant who is Jeremiah was his father. We believe we don't have evidence of that. But Joseph was actually his son, five-year-old son, that we actually proved through the census. And it's something we picked up. And that was actually through a, a, a SB7 box, he, re he replied. Cool. So wow. you're, you're, you're dead on again. He, he, he's always there with his father because we always pick up his father the same time we pick up him. So, yeah. That's awesome. He, stay, he stays very, very close to his dad. Yes, he does. Yeah, yes, very, does. very close to his dad. Yep. That's amazing. Before we go on to the next clip, um, I'm just looking at the time, and I just want everyone to know that the show is going to go on. We're going to go to the clips. But if you're listening to the audio version of the KGRA network, they, at the top of the hour, will flip over to their next show. If you want to continue listening and watching, switch over to um, the Facebook pages, the YouTube youtube pages or any of the entity voices pages it's live on multiple channels across the boards um and the show will continue to go on if, if not we thank you for the hour that you listened and really appreciate you tuning in so now absolutely back to the program <laughs> and if you leave you haven't been watching people right <laughs> seriously yeah really <laughs> welcome to the next hour of zaffis and friends <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Next clip. How how do you travel by horse, by car, by boat? Not by horse. Not by horse. Not 
Wow. That's so a new Johnny, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. You've been to this place before. I'm pretty sure. Okay. The, 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 it's a good possibility, Ron. You know me. I can't even remember uh, the, the, what I did <laughs> yesterday half of the time anymore. Yeah, it's amazing. But anyways, what I'm, the, there's something to do with a steam, steamer and a steamer ship that's got something to do with a couple of old-fashioned dresses but it's got something to do with and it's got something to do with a steamship if that makes any sense i don't understand what that is but very prominent and actually there, there's something that ties in and i'm not quite sure that it's tied in within that structure but it might be an exterior thing where it's, I'm almost going to want to say somebody got killed. Where the hell is that place? <laughs> That's the Beekman Arms in Rhinebeck, New York. And that was Echovox when I first started messing around with it. And that was in 2017. And that was the first time I had any version of one of those portals. I had the mini one that was in the picture there. And I just asked a question and I gave a multiple choice. How did you travel by car, by horse, by boat, or whatever the three were? And then the female voice, it repeated at the end. It only said it once. I repeated it. I looped it the last two times. But I clearly heard not by horse. Mm -hmm. And in the use, he didn't put it on the thing. Yeah. But you hear when he's asking the question, she she goes, truck. I said, and I it, heard truck. I just said that. Yeah. Like, truck is in there. Yeah, I, I, I heard that too. I heard the word truck. Truck. Mm -hmm. And then it says <laughs> not by horse. Okay. I it's don't. One the, it's ahead. one of the growth magnets locations. That's what we thought maybe. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't believe I've ever been in that place. Okay. I don't okay. think. Yeah. That, that again. Uh, as soon as you explained all that, no. But does it have anything to do with uh, a ship or tied in with something with uh, a ship and a couple of ladies or maybe? I don't. I got to stay with ship and a couple of ladies that are tying in with that. It's possible. I'm trying to remember it's some of the history I heard of. It? Yeah. It was. It's a hotel. Um, this is one of the places that is supposed to be legitimately um, having uh, had the presence of George Washington. His troops were running maneuvers on the lawn there, supposedly, um, you know, obviously years and years ago. Um, I do want to say that there's some connection to what he's saying with clothing or something. Too. I'm trying to remember what the history of it was. Is it um, close to a river? It is not far from, it's not too far from the Hudson River really either, I don't think. Hmm. It's not far from the water. Uh, there is there is a, a river a river or a tributary um, that's off of the Hudson. All right, because Rhinebeck's not far from the water, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's yeah. when we first started using that Yeah, that was yeah. that was yeah, and I think I think um, shortly before that we had worked with uh, with Brian Cano. Okay, and he, was, right. and he was using Echo Vox. He was the one that introduced he us introduced to us to Echo Vox, and, and I had never seen the app before. And then he was doing great with it because he does great stuff. Yeah. Um, and we started playing with it and that was one of the first things I got with it. I was like, this thing is not bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of my favorite things is the, um, the, the app that's on the cell phone for the, uh, Echo Spirit. yeah, the, the, I mean, I still, and I won't upgrade it. I use the original version cause I don't want to change anything. And Ron, you, you know, you had uh, experienced that at the yeah. chance. Was that the chance? The I'm trying to remember the theater. Yes, it was. I, okay, and you know, uh, an interesting thing for any of you that aren't familiar with it is, you know, my uncle comes through like you can't believe, mm -hmm. and, and you know, he communicates and goes back and forth, and you know, I remember because Ron was even amazed by it because he just stood there and went, "I can't even freaking believe this is happening." <laughs> so. But anyways, it you know, it's where he just communicates. He comes through and everything. But over the past uh, past couple of years, there hasn't been too much because most of us have been staying put. But um, I just did a theater here in New London uh, uh, back in uh, January. And uh, Ed and Lorraine came through and they were going back and forth. And I'm standing there arguing with my cell phone. I'm telling him to shut up. <laughs> He's telling me to shut up. And, you know, this whole thing was going through. Then Lorraine and Ed were having a conversation going back and forth. But the phenomenal thing was, you know, 
we got done with everything and we were downstairs and this young lady walks up to me and she goes, Johnny. And I go, yeah, she goes, you don't remember me. And I looked at her. I went, no. She goes, do you realize how well I knew your aunt and uncle? And she started crying. She goes, that was your aunt and uncle. And I go, yeah, I know. They come through all the time. I say, drive me freaking crazy. <laughs> so when I try to do an investigation, when I try to do an investigation, a lot of times he interrupts. He, you know, has to take over the whole thing. You know, I, and she just stood there and she was shaking her head. She goes, but you're acting like they're, 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 they're here with you. I go, they are. They don't leave. They, they're there. I said, I said, this is just, you know, and I got used to it. It's just a, a fact of it, and I got used to it now after all this time. Um, that's, that's what happened that night, John. You came into the Chance Theater. Nobody knew you were coming. He popped in on us. We were yeah. having a decent investigation. We were getting some stuff. It was a little quiet in other spots. Johnny showed up. Boom. All of a sudden, he was arguing with his Echo Box on his phone, and, and <laughs> he was bickering with them, through, and he was getting responses. And he, they would say something. He goes, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And then they would say something. And he's like, no, no, no. It was back and forth. It was unbelievable. We were all laughing. They were, they were answering him at every turn. And yeah, the funny thing too is it, it it comes through so clear, Ron. Yeah, I mean, you were there and you heard it, and you know, like I said, this woman, uh, somebody just asked, where was the theater? It was the uh, uh, the Grade Theater in New London. And um, uh, again, with that, with you know, watching that woman and the uh, two of the event coordinators walked over later, and they go, that what happened? That that woman was crying. I go, oh, I said, she's kind of upset because that was my aunt and uncle and she was very good friends with them and she was tied in with all of us over, over the years and everything. And she said, it just, she told me the one thing that made her feel so good. She was so glad that she was able to hear Lorraine. She missed Aww. talking to Lorraine. Aww. And I said, you know, me with my, you know, me with my humor. And I turned and looked at her. I go, well, good. Take her with you. I said, so I can do my investigation. <laughs> and she just looked at me. And she goes, Johnny, you're never going to change. I go, nope. nope. <laughs> All right. All right. Next clip. No, go there. Right here. Do you miss your family? Do you need help? What happened to you? Up here in this building. Maybe. Hear it? Go on. That's cool. That was cool. Right? Yeah. Thank yeah, you. that is that it that's phenomenal because again, with that it is a very tight knit. They were very tight knit. And what I mean by that, they were very close. Um, it, it, almost the, 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 old, the other thing that came to mind wasn't, I don't know why, but it's a spiritual. It's almost like a spiritual environment. And there, it, okay, whatever. It, <laughs> you, you are spot uh, on. You are spot yeah. on. Oh, all right. I, I know, right? <laughs> With that, with that whole spiritual thing, the, the with that spirit, it doesn't matter. That spirit didn't care whether it was family or not family. It was family. Okay. Well, okay. that was the that was the Diplomat Hotel in Baguio City, Philippines, which built as a monks and it was a retreat house for monks and nuns. When World War II happened, oh. was taken over by General Yamashita. He beat them all. Wow. Took, wow. took the building and made it a military quarters. And then you had both Japanese soldiers, American soldiers killed. And then it became a hotel, which 
there were some suicides and other crazy stuff, but you nailed that stand because that was probably the original monks and nuns that were being in World War II. Okay. Yeah, the spiritual the spiritual is extremely ex extremely tied in with that with that area. It's very spiritual. We yeah. wow. hear those responses with our own ears. We I believe the, it. We were the only two people in the entire building. There was only one security guard on the property. He took 10 steps for a 300 yard walk. He said, that's as far as I'm going. You two are on your own. And we spent the entire night in there alone. So it was, it was an amazing location. Mm. That was, that was an amazing assessment for people keeping score. If you're not keeping score at home, Zap is seven, ghost zero. zero. <laughs> That sounds so Yeah. Okay. Which wh one of you two had you had a you had a spiritual experience? Which one of you two did? Who At two were you talking to? <laughs> yes. I my arm was grabbed by the shirt through a barbed uh, fence yes. over the door, and which was locked. I was switching the battery in my camera. It grabbed my shirt and literally pulled my arm up against the gate to where I dropped the camera. That was the major experience we I had in that location. Wow. Okay. But there were so many. We, we had investigated for years. 20 minutes into it, she said, I need to go outside. I said, what are you talking I about? It's raining. It. She was she was literally frightened. And when we got outside, she said, I, I this place scares me. Yeah. I said, okay. But we stayed. <laughs> well, there is like so, so much. It's like so much energy coming in. I mean, you could just feel the layers. I mean, or hear it. It's it's crazy. Well, the crazy. other thing that I think helped was that it was raining. Mm. And there was some sort of a, the water would come down the walls and channel into these rivers on the floor and then flow out of the building. But that natural acoustics of the rain and the water falling created a white noise effect that not only I think Amplified. gave them bigger opportunity to speak, but also helped in us actually hearing what they yeah. were saying. Cause I don't know how many times the first three minutes we were in there, I kept saying to Sharia, Sharia, I kept saying, did you hear that? I and she wouldn't answer me. And then I'd hear it again. Sharia, did you hear that? Finally, she looks at me and she goes, stop. Sat. I hear them all. And it's freaking me out. I said, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought when I saw that too. That's that water created an audio support. It did for the, for the, the building, the way it's, yeah. the building is and the water, the whole yeah. environment that created yeah. an audio support. And th those are vibratory energies that are not at a level that's audible to your ear. But when you give it that support, now right. it becomes at a level where you're actually able to detect it and or record it, of course. And that's, yeah. I think that was one of the reasons why that was so clear. Like every piece of vocal, in that clip is clear. Yeah, so, they, so, they, they answered every question she asked. I, yeah. When we heard it back, I'm like, oh my God. I, we, we heard the answer. We just didn't realize it was to every question she asked. Yeah. So this this investigation that Tony and Sheree did, let me let me give everybody watching and John and Ron and Lourdes just a just a glimpse of what Tony mm -hmm. and Sheree probably went through. They when they came back, they they sent unedited videos to Audra and I, so we could see their investigation that they did while they were there. And I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. When I go to a location, I'll walk the entire place by myself and I'm sensitive. So I can feel and hear a lot of things once I connect with the location and I don't waver. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't give me chills. It doesn't mm -hmm. scare me. I'm actually, I feel more comfortable doing that than I do being around people downtown. <laughs> when they sent me these videos, I watched these videos and I kept calling Audra into the office going, oh my God, this is giving me chills. This is freaking me out. Just the videos alone of the intensity of this investigation that these guys did was just insane just watching the videos. And if I can walk a location like Trans Allegheny by myself and not waver, but I can't watch the video of this investigation that these guys did, I can't imagine actually being there. Yeah. Because, okay, because it's that's what I was saying earlier. It's spiritual. Yeah. I don't know if you both did or one of you, you walked away altered. You oh, were I, changed. Without a doubt. I mean, okay. that place, you were that changed. Place was by far okay. the most intense place we've ever yeah. stepped foot in. And it absolutely changed us both. But we got EVPs in English, Japanese, Japanese. Latin, yeah. and Tagalog. Yeah. 
I mean, I've never had EVPs in four different languages from one location. It was well, it dude, was you were pulling everybody in, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh my gosh! All right, next so clip. Next clip. Where am I now? Chris, you are right there. Right here. All right, here we go, guys. Lord, one time. That was good. That was good. That's <laughs> definitely that's that's jail time. There is definitely. <laughs> Whatever it is, it is tremendous with the with the metal around it. The person's <laughs> tortured, and it, it's weird. It, it, it's a very, very okay. When I say dark, I don't mean you know in, in the form of that, but it's a dark. What was happening? And there's something with the clinging and the holding of the metal. So, John, do you know Trans Allegheny at all? Yes, I was there. Oh, God, years and years ago when they just had purchased the property. I was there about several months after they purchased the property. That was caught in the violent women's ward in Trans Allegheny on the third floor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that yep. metal doors, bars on the windows. Yeah, yep. you nailed it right, right on the head. Yeah. Yep. Eight zero. <laughs> yeah. Again. Oh, that's, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> so, which one of you sent him all the clips? I know. The I know. <laughs> down in history because yeah. that is amazing. I mean, literally <laughs> amazing. You guys, so for everybody that. watching, I just loaded these clips up into StreamYard <laughs> yesterday at like 7 p.m. So there's no way John had time to go through all these. <laughs> exactly. We got to let. To be honest with you. Yeah, but to be honest with you, even if you did, I would have looked at it and would go, what's this shit? And I wouldn't have even listened anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is phenomenal. And for anybody that's never been to Trans Allegheny, the violent women's ward and the violent men's ward are, 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 ward are heavy steel doors mm -hmm. with these little 12 by 12 windows that have like these a, little like bars. They look like jail cells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying. I, 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 the only thing I can remember, because um, uh, gosh, I can't remember how many years ago, but I know her father just had purchased the property. Yep. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to even remember their names. I can't remember their names. But um, they had just purchased the property. There wasn't that much that was done. There was a little bit of the renovating. I think it was about a year after they had purchased it that that I was there. Gosh, I, I want to say, I think it was, I think it was uh, Steve Tango, myself, and I, I, I think Jay, I think Jay was there. I'm trying yeah. to remember. Uh, I, there's so many of uh, the different ones I can't remember, but I think that's who I was there with, if I yeah. remember right. So at this point, they've renovated almost the entire first floor hallways and all the center hallways. They've restored them back to the old administrative offices. Mm. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, next clip. <laughs> Love that one. She Love she was a very sick person. Um, had a lot going. I mean, physically sick, not necessarily mental. Uh, the, and the person was actually happy when they finally died. They, they were able to be free of what was tied and what the torment was that they were going through from the physical uh, ailments that were happening to this individual. <clears throat> and they were finally happy 
that the energy spirit soul, I always say all three, that left the physical body because they were finally freed of it. And I don't know why, but I'm picking up. There's a sense of curly hair. I don't know why curly. I'm getting curly hair. And a stout, almost stout. I don't know how else to explain it to you. Stout, strong, very, very strong presence with this individual. They, they were a little powerhouse <laughs> is what I'm getting. I don't know if that makes any sense. But they still watch and they still look. And when they don't approve of something, they still they'll still pipe right up. I don't I don't know. That's pretty that's pretty damn good. So <laughs> that's that's a direct radio voice born out of white noise that big boom box world band radio and the in the image was the radio I was running. Um, that was right here in our home. And I thought immediately when I heard the vocal when it said, I'm happy for you, then the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph sounds like something that a lot of the old Italian people would say. Um <coughs> So I took that as being one of two possible relatives that I had that have passed in the last couple of, let's say, let's say three years, give or take. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was my mom or my aunt, but my aunt had this big white cotton candy curly hair. That's who it is. And, yeah. and she was very strong willed. And she would say, you know, Jesus, Mary, she would talk like that. Wow. Wow. That's so cool. So That's, your description kind of helped me narrow it down between the two possibilities I thought might have been behind. Oh no, they, they, this was the type of person kicked ass and then asked questions. That was that was my <laughs> that was my aunt. That was my yeah, my father's cousin. Absolutely. Yeah. More more than anybody that would say it was her. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Wow, John, you were you were yeah. awesome, man. That's so awesome. <laughs> you awesome. And that All was right. right here. Yeah. Next clip. <laughs> I love that clip. That's awesome. That that's <clears throat> undoubtedly also too that that was a worker. But but here's the flip side with that one. They ended up getting somehow con con confined because the arms got wrapped on the person. So hmm. whatever that means, they got confined. But it was uh, uh, someone that had worked. They had spent. They actually, I'm going to go as far as to say this person might have died while they were still employed there. They were, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so, so. That is an absolute dead on possibility. That is the old Phelps Dodge Hospital in Ajo, Arizona that catered to all of the open pit mining people that worked okay. for and they had cave-ins fell off of 
Cliff's jackhammering every injury under the book. So what you just described is spot on. Even the tying of the hands, because why? Yeah, it was it was a hospital. It was a psych ward, wasn't it? Well, what's what's even more no, impressive? Hospital, 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 hospital. What's even more oh. impressive? What John said is that actual room that you see the shadow come out of is a storage room. Those, sitting the sitting back, by, yeah, yeah. So a worker right. coming out of a storage room at the end of the hospital. It was right next to the surgery center. That was actually a storage room across from the X-ray room, which is Jesus, John, and Mary and Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that would make yeah. But wait a minute. Think about this one. Okay, you can see them where they're confined. If it was near the X-ray room, they would have had the vest things that they would have put on. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's that true, could yeah. that, that could be. I don't know. I'm That's just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. could have been. Could have been. I don't know. Good Johnny, I knew you were talented. <laughs> I didn't know you had these <laughs> abilities. <laughs> that was that was ten for ten, wasn't it? Yeah, Seriously. yeah. yeah. <laughs> John, They're I'm going to show you the running, picture. Right? This is the this is the possibility for the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's currently in big. And That's he actually cool. went like this. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Freaking Johnny, man. <laughs> and she did have physical ailments. She had cirrhosis of the liver, I think, and she wasn't a drinker. But there's rare instances when people can have that. Even yeah. Not. And so yeah. she had that, and she and she had walking problems. Um, so she had a lot of the physical ailments that would have made her luminous essence soul glad to have been out of the meat suit. Yeah. Did she have an alpha one deficiency? Do you know what kind? An alpha, alpha one. Alpha one. I don't know. Okay. I'll just, it's it's I'll just rare like in that, that yeah. um, you said the sources of the liver, but it not from drinking. It's usually it affects your lungs, but in ten percent of the people that get this, it's it's the liver that it attacks. And my brother-in-law technically um died from it at 36 and my nephew has it so i very familiar with it mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah all right so. and we have one, one more, more clip yeah. one more are we ready <laughs> sure. John's always ready. Yeah. <laughs> all right here we go That's what time it is. Okay, what year? What year was that? 
<clears throat> that was actually recorded at, what at the end of 2021 at the Shanley <laughs> Hotel. Yeah. No, I know it's a Shanley. That's Sal. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Well, you probably know so. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you seriously <laughs> asking him that question right now? <laughs> yeah. This is the wrong time to ask Johnny. Do you think so? <laughs> do you think so? <laughs> How about to ask John for the lottery numbers? <laughs> okay, I think that uh, again. Um, Screw that. If I get pick up on the lottery number shit. I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> okay. I definitely my gut it just tells me that that was definitely Sal uh keeping an eye on things and watching things and it was almost like he was disappointed at that point in time because the, the, he wanted to see it and he wanted to watch it but he was too tired he, he was way too tired and again that's you know with the multiple and then tying in there, there there's there's a looping session that's going on with that one, with that individual, with that spirit. It just keeps, okay, it just keeps reenacting, reenact. That's what I'm looking for. It's reenacting, reenacting. And the only thing that came to me and the way I felt it was that it was Sal. Now, as far as the, uh, the Shanley goes, I've been there, you know, several times that, you know, again, I'm familiar with it. I was personal friends with Sal, so I knew him you know, uh, quite well and everything. And that's what that voice sounded like. It sounded like Sal to me. Yeah. I, I got to, to meet him a couple of times when I first went up there. Mm -hmm. um, she unfortunately never had the opportunity mm -hmm. to meet him. He, he made your family as soon as you walked in the door. Oh, I, I'll do him and him and his first wife. They, yeah. I love them. They were beautiful people. Yeah. I, I've never heard anything bad about so them. That the, the, the part about that, that whole clip that fascinated me when I, when I went over it was that was, again, that was direct radio voice. It was a, an empty, barren, white noise frequency filtered, mm -hmm. no sweeping, no broadcast. And it was 3 a.m. when they said it. Um, the books, you didn't autograph them. So Rich Michella from New Jersey Paranormal Project was there. He had his second book out. Okay. I contributed to his book. He asked me to write a, a part to it, so I contributed. So he handed out books to a couple of people. He didn't sign them, nor did I, because it wasn't my book. But they weren't signed. So they could have been talking to him. But, I mean, the fact that it mentioned books... Not being autographed, the time was spot on, and then the length of the sentences was was to me was astounding because it was all completely accurate to the moment. That clear as can be, yeah. clear as can be. There, there, there is no questioning that. That's class A too. That falls into the class A category. But sure. interesting that you picked up on that 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 it could be Sal because. Is very well could be yeah, Sal. because he is it, known it, it, to it makes sense stick that, around. Yep, yeah, it makes sense that that could be him too. If yeah. any, if anybody was going to haunt that place, you know, from recent passing away, it would be Sal because that place was his baby. And you know, um, mm -hmm. again, you know, I think with with some of these historical locations like that, you know, um, especially over the course of the years, that people that have been there, you know, and uh, were the guardians of it, if you will. Okay. And we're taking care of it. Uh, and if they were going to haunt something like that, especially there, I would say it'd be Sal more than anybody else. Hmm. You yeah. know, it's hard because to me, that was definitely human spirit. And I can, the funny thing, too, is it jarred my memory. I remember Sal staying a couple of different times. He was tired. He had to go to sleep now. Yeah, can you keep the eyes open? Yes. I remember a couple of different times when um, I was there. Probably something you know, you probably don't know either is um, um, uh, Alexandra Holzer. I don't know if any of you are familiar with her or know her. Uh, well, I know her. And uh, we were up there at one point. But I no, Sal, Sal was still alive at that point. And we were just going back and forth up there. And I remember we were just chit-chatting. And um, uh, going back, I don't even, I, I don't know what's bringing that up, why I'm even remembering that. But anyway, Al and I w were just walking through there, and I don't know if there is the fish and hunting room still up there, or it was a bedroom. They had fishes and everything over the on the walls and stuff. 
I don't know if that. I haven't been up there in years, so I don't yeah. even know what's up there anymore. I don't remember. I know the room you're talking about. I don't. I haven't been in it since. Um, Kelly. We usually yeah. stay in the bordello. Too, we always stay in the bordello in the back in the same room. Okay. All right. Um, Kelly, who owns it now, is doing a fantastic job. She's renovated and brought stuff up to code. It actually has heat and air conditioning that functions now. Um, so it's nice to see it in the hands of somebody who comes from where we come from, which is investigating and, and keeping it in, in preservable and in visible shape. That's good. And, you know, that's yeah. good. Yeah. It's very, it's very fortunate Excellent. for all of us that that's happening. But um, I know the room you're talking about. I don't know. Now that he said Sal, like I was like, I'm, I'm reconnecting to the evidence and, and like rethinking it. And it didn't even occur to me before. No, and it's, it makes sense, right? Because he's like saying that the eyes open and the water grab, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it does. I don't think any of the other spirits wouldn't care that the, the books aren't autographed. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Sal right? May. That's a great point. Yeah. That guy's a host. You got somebody here who's got his books. You're not even signing them. Like that's something. And that, that's a, that would have been a typical Sal remark. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus, wow. Joseph, and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's impressive. I mean, just utterly impressive. I think there's probably not a one of us that hasn't taken a, a second look at our evidence after what John, you know, was able to to get from it. So that that to me was incredible enough about tonight's show. But Absolutely. I've got some very serious thank yous to give tonight. The first one, obviously, to John for taking the time, for joining us, for being a part of this show, this fantastic show tonight. So we we thank you sincerely for coming on. I want to give a thank you to KGRA, who has been our home for the last oh over year and one week. I think um, this will be our last show on KGRA, and uh, but I want to give my sincere thank you to the KGRA Absolutely. network. They have been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I want to say thank you to the audience uh, for tuning in each and every Monday night to watch us. Um, please continue to do that. Um, and we just want to say thank you. Without you guys, there'd be no point of us doing a show. So thank you. But with that said, um, John, unless you have anything you want to close with or anything to tell the people, uh, please feel free to do that now. Okay. <laughs> uh, like you haven't told him enough already, but come on. <laughs> well, if you got anything coming up that you want him to do, anything you want to promote, or, share yeah. your uh, books. Well, be, uh, best best way to find anything out or uh, get anything to me uh, is you know go on my site johnsoffice.com. Uh, there's a bookstore there with uh, the past five books. Uh, that I've been involved with and everything. There's several conventions coming up over the next several months and fingers crossed, all of us will be able to be able right. to attend them and go without uh, <laughs> yeah, getting hopefully. too freaked out or anything. So you know, again, that uh, that's great, but keep it, keep, uh, keep us on after you sign off there for a few minutes. Please. Oh, you bet. You, you bet. Chris, oh, yeah. you to oh, Tony, I already know you're so freaking fired up. It ain't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, let me say, let me say with, with, with that comment, audience. John, when, when you're coming on a world on uh, Andrea's a world awakening, that's going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. She told you to ask me that, didn't she? <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she did. Okay. I okay. We'll we'll get it. We'll get it set. Up. We'll get it right. set up. Sounds good. We will. Uh, Chris, do you want to give a, a closing line? Wait, Ron yeah. wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say one thing too. That that we're all. Not only did we thank you, John, for for doing the show tonight too, but for everybody watching, the intent of the show tonight was we wanted to share and roundtable evidence with the opportunity to do so with somebody who's as experienced and knowledgeable as John. What right. we got tonight from the way the show played out was phenomenal. It was for us unprecedented and it was not even the original plan, yep. but it could not have been better. Could Agreed. 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 It was amazing. It, was it really great. was. I enjoyed it. It was, it fun. was fun. Yeah. Ron, when does anything go on schedule or get lined up with me? When does that ever work? <laughs> it's always good, though. It's always good. It's always good. That was fantastic. Yeah. So, so guys, I want I want to step before I go to uh, to my closing Jerry Springer line, like I always do. <laughs> I want to share something with you. 
So I'm going to share my screen right now. We talk about para unity on our show quite a bit. This is the Macy's. The Macy's have been a part of EVP, um, the electronic voice phenomenon for decades. They, they, they're dedicated. I'm reading. So they dedicated their lives to communicate with those who have passed on, just like all of us do. They lost their home in the Boulder City County fire in December of 2021. Mark lost everything that he has done over the years as far as research and everything, as far as EVPs mm -hmm. and all of his investigating. His wife was a spiritual healer. She lost everything. All of us have posted a GoFundMe on our pages. If you have the ability to donate even a dollar to help these, these great people and, and promote the parent unity that we talk about, please, please give a shout out to them and, and do something that you can and, that share. You, and share if you can. If you, if you can't give, at least share so the people that can right. give can, can help those. And that's what we're all about. We're all about parent unity. We're about, all about the paranormal community and keeping it going and proving those non-believers that, you know, there, there is energy out there and they do try to communicate with us. And just because we all pass on doesn't mean that we're gone. Right. Yeah. Chris, thank you for doing that. And, and thank yeah. you for doing it the way you did it. Mark Macy contributed to, to my book that's coming out hopefully next month. Um, he is, he is a legend in ITC. He is, uh, his work is unprecedented. He's right up there with the Marcello Bacci's and, and um, um, Ernst Sinkowski's who, who put this, uh, the ITC field on the map. Um, he's a great, he was, he didn't even bat an eye when I asked him if he wanted to contribute to the book. He did it immediately. Um, so yeah, if we can do anything to help someone in need, uh, that's, yes. that's what we always say we're about. So that's what we're doing here. So sure. thank you for that. And, and, and to end our show, you know, usually I try and come up with a funny line to tie the show together with uh, with our catchphrase. But tonight I got to tell you guys that having John on was, you know, this was just phenomenal for Audra and I. And I know for Ron and Lourdes and for Tony and Cherie, John has been one of those people that we aspire to be as paranormal investigators. I've been watching John for years. You know, I've been doing this since I was a teenager you know, like John, and I hope 50 years from now, everybody looks at me the way they looked at John, the way they look at John today. And I can tell you right now, this was the best show, in my opinion, that EVP has done because John did one thing that is hard to do with me. He made me speechless. <laughs> I, 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 I did hard to do. It, and that's hard to do. I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to comment. But what I can say is if you guys want to be one of the best in the paranormal communities, you have to be John and you have to stay haunted. <laughs> Good night, guys. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night.